So the book of Job, first big portion of it, Job goes through an enormous amount of problems and, and difficulties. God shows up at the end of the book of Job, speaks for multiple chapters, and the overwhelming thing with what God says is, you're not qualified, Job, to question me, buddy. <clears throat> so, humans, as humans, Liz, we're not qualified to question God. So, to help, help the crowd just, just get a, a little better glimpse of that, visually speaking, we're going to ask each other some questions. And you're going to start. I'd like to start. I'd like to ask you a question. In your vast experience, mm. what, what is childbirth like? What is childbirth like? You know, I do feel fairly qualified to answer mm. that question. Please, share with me. I was, yeah. uh, I was there the mm. night when our son Marcus was born. So was I, yeah. <laughs> we both had very important roles, mm. roles that yes, night. Yes, we did. You were great. Well, thank you, Liz. Mm. And one of the, one of the, I think one of the main things I learned that night when it comes to childbirth is don't tell jokes. Mm. Right. Don't tell jokes. Right. And it's, it's a long night, and... And Liz, you know, was having it's you. You were having these uh, these contractions, and and you know, I'm I'm kind of getting bored a little bit. You know, this is hour after hour. I'm just standing there trying to help. But what am I supposed to? I'm just standing there. Like, I was pretty entertained. <laughs> you got this, Liz. You got this. And I'm just and then the nurse comes in. So it's me, Liz, and the nurse. And the nurse asks Liz, "How are you doing?" And I said, "Oh, I'm doing fine. Th thank you." It was a joke. And Liz did not laugh. The nurse did not laugh. And I learned a great lesson. Don't tell jokes <laughs> through childbirth. But no, no, I have no idea what childbirth is like, and I would not even pretend to, uh, to be qualified to answer that question. Liz, I've got a question for you. Huh. So what's it like to be a man? Mm. Well, I have a dad. So, you know, that's some interesting experience there. And I have a husband. You do? Yeah. yeah. And a son. We talked about that already. A lot of men. Yeah. A lot yeah. of men in your life. Four brothers. Yeah. So I think from all that experience, I have learned that I know absolutely nothing <laughs> about what it's like to be a man. I'm not qualified in the least to answer that question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I have a question for you. You do? Yes. Okay. Babe, what's it like to be a woman? Well, I was birthed by a woman. True. True. So? And I have a wife. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm working on my book, what it's like to, to be a woman, but it's, I haven't started yet. I'm still <laughs> looking for that first chapter. So I have no idea what it's like to be a woman. So Liz, tell me, share with us your infinite knowledge. Okay. What was it like growing up in the 1960s? Mm, mm. Well, I was born in 1979 pretty close to the 1960s. I feel like I can, you know, uh, bell bottoms, love them, love them, wear them all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I got nothing. Sorry. <laughs> I'm pretty sure bell bottoms were not the 1960s. Like so. I said, I got nothing. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, Babe, um, yes. what does it feel like to be a soldier in live combat? What does that feel like? Okay. Now this one, here we go. I have played hours of Call of Duty. And hours. hours. And hours. And hours. If you play Call of Duty, I'm going to say vernacular that will and impress hours. you. And hours. Modern Warfare 1, I was a 10th prestige gold cross, okay? <laughs> and I'm very proud of that. Very proud of that. So I played an enormous amount. And <clears throat> hours. Of Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah. Liz knows. Liz will testify. Also Halo. I played lots of Halo in my day. I've been playing video games since I was a little kid. Love Halo. And I'm not done yet. I was in the Baptist version of Boy Scouts growing up as a kid, Baptist Boys Battalion. Can you sing the song, the Baptist Boys Battalion song? I could, Liz. Mm. Yes, I could. <laughs> to answer your question, yes, I could. And lastly, I've been to Washington, D.C. D.C., I've seen the beautiful memorials for our soldiers. So with all of that pulled together, I have absolutely no clue what it's like to be a soldier in live combat, and I would not pretend for a second that I would be qualified to speak for them. One last question for you, Liz. I'm ready. What do you think it feels like to be adopted? Hmm. How does it feel to be adopted? Well, my little sister, I'm number six of seven kids, my little sister, Rebecca, we called her Buzzy, when she would really start to annoy me when I was younger, 
I would tell her, oh, just be quiet. You're adopted. So I feel like seeing the pain that that inflicted on her, it really helps me understand. No, I don't understand anything at all about. I see. I'm completely your unqualified. Your sister was not adopted, right? She was not adopted. She wasn't. She was mistreated by her older sister, but she was not adopted. I see. No. Very good. So as, as ridiculous as it was for us to pass these questions back and forth, it is far more ridiculous for us to think that we, from our perspective, can at all question God and how he's doing and what he's doing through our lives.